Today we'll do triple integrals. And to motivate you for this triple integrals, I'll talk about one application of this. And the application of a triple integral is, one of them is, there's several, but if I just pick one, one of the most basic ones is like this, uh, finding the mass. <coughs> now, <coughs> the way I'm going to approach this is by talking about density. Do you know what density is? Mm, yeah, mass over volume is called the density, and you put rho. And I, I've seen students looking at this and saying, P, please don't do that. You're, you're being educated as a college-educated man, right? Or woman. So uh, yeah, come on. don't say this is P. This is rho, OK? This is rho. It's a Greek letter for R. Um, now, often, you use this in the following form. You get the mass by multiplying the density with the volume, right? So that's the volume, uh, that's the formula for the mass. However, this is only valid if your density is constant, if it's uniform across the entire thing. If the density is not a constant value, then you don't know what to do. You can't apply this formula, okay? So uh, maybe I should say this. Uh, uh, valid only when rho is constant. Okay. So think about the following example. Suppose you have a cube. Let's say you have a cube. So let's say you have a cube of uh, length 1. So this is uh, x, y, and z. And let's think about the density as given as x plus y plus 2z. Suppose your density is given as rho equals x plus y plus 2z. The question is, what is the, the mass? Let's think about this question. So when you're at the origin, 0, 0, 0, what's the density at the origin? 0. So there's like almost nothing at near the origin. Uh, what about this point here? If this is 1, 1, 1. What's the density there? If it's 1, 1, 1, it would be 4. I didn't write any units, but you can uh, pick your own units. Let's say this is like kilogram per cubic meters, <coughs> and these are meters. So uh, the density at, at this point, that, that vertex, is 4 kilograms per cubic meters. Whereas near the origin, it's almost zero. Now, you have to deal with these changing densities, especially when you're doing fluid dynamics, uh, in fluid mechanics. In fluid mechanics, uh, you deal with two types of fluids. Uh, they're fluids which is compressible, and fluids uh, that are not compressible, I I I incompressible. Okay? Uh, the incompressible fluids have the same density everywhere. Okay. Uh, but if you have a fluid that's compressible, or sometimes you, you can use fluid dynamics to, to think about the air. Air is compressible, right? Uh, when it's under high pressure, the density increases, right? So you'll have different density at different places. And then if you're trying to figure out the mass, you can't simply use this, this formula. You have to approach it by using this triple integral. So let me show you how that's done. So here's the approach. We say the mass 
of the entire thing is the sum of masses. And by the way, just like how we, how we did the area as uh, area is sum of parts of area, this is always true. Anything is, any physical quantity that you have is the sum of its parts. Okay? So uh, you could calculate mass in this way. You could calculate area or volume this way. You can also calculate electric fields this way. Uh, a lot of things can be com computed this way. Okay? And then if you think about what dm is, Here's, here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to take this Q, and we're trying to take little bits of the Q, tiny, tiny bits of Q. And then I want to calculate the, the masses of each individual ones, and I add everything as we go move around this Q. And the sum of those small masses will give you the mass of the entire thing. That, that's our plan, OK? All right. Now, let me show you how to deal with this, the, the mass of this thing. This first, you should think about this small cube as something that has a very small x, x uh, width and very small length and very small height. These are infinitesimal quantities, as close to zero as possible. In that case, what's the volume? Volume of this is a box volume is calculated by length times width times height, right? So it's uh, the volume, I, I want to say dv, because it's a very, very small volume. The very, very small volume is dx times dy times dz. OK? Then. In order to get the mass attributed to this small piece, which we call dm, that can be calculated by multiplying the density to dv. <coughs> now, I said this is only valid when rho is constant, right? <coughs> and in this question, rho is changing, right? However, this is OK because this is such a tiny, tiny piece that the density at one end and density on the other end is almost the same. Okay. And that's, that's why these arguments work. Well, when you take things into tiny, tiny bits, then you can consider at that point some things to be constant. So that, that's what we're going to do. So this, this is what we're, we'll be doing. We'll be writing dm as actually rho times dv, but dv is this, so it's rho times dx dy dz. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to say it's rho times dx dy dz. But because you have three things, you have to integrate three times. So often you, in your uh, engineering or physics textbooks, you're, you're going to see just this equal to that with just a single integral. But that single integral has to be figured out in context. Sometimes it means triple integral. Sometimes it means double integral. Sometimes it means just a single integral. Okay? So even though you see a single one in your textbooks in physics or engineering, uh, you, you have to pay close attention to see what it means. Right? In our case, it's a triple integral because I have to make this thing move in the x direction, y direction, and z direction. Uh, and I have to uh, add them up in all directions to get the entire entire cube. So I need the triple integral. OK, so let's actually do the computation. To actually do the computation, uh, I can say that the mass is equal to the rho dx dy dz. But rho is this thing, right? So you say x plus y plus 2z. And we integrate by x, integrate by y, integrate by z. Now, where does x vary from? Where does x <coughs> take its values? <coughs> zero to one. Zero to one, right? X, x, the minimum value of x is zero. The maximum is one in this cube. Right? So x goes from zero to one. How about y? Zero zero. Also zero to one, right? How about z? Also 0 to 1. Okay. So if I do this 
tri three integrals one by one, at the end of the day, I'm going to get the, the mass of this thing. Okay? So that's, that's how we're going to do it. So we can calculate 0 to 1, 0 to 1. Let's integrate this by x. The integration of x is 1 half x squared, right? And then when you integrate y, remember you're integrating by x, so y and 2z are both considered as constants. What do you get if you integrate constant? y becomes yx. 2z becomes 2zx. And then to this, you're plugging in x equal to 1 and x equal to 0. So those 1 and 0 has to be plugged into the x. You don't plug that into y or z because we just integrated by x first. Okay? All right, 0 to 1. 0 to 1. Let's actually do the calculation. If I plug in 1, I get 1 half plus y plus 2z. And when I plug in 0, I get 0 only, so you, you don't subtract anything. It's just minus 0. Okay. So that's what we get. We still have to do dy dz. Okay. Now integrate by y. Integrating 1 half by y, it's 1 half y. y by y, it's 1 half y squared. Plus, uh, when you integrate 2z by y, it's 2zy. Again, you have to plug in 1 and 0. And those values are supposed to go into y only. You don't plug it into z because you're integrating by y. Now when you plug into y, it's 1 half plus 1 half and 2z. Right? So it's uh, 1 <coughs> half plus 1 half plus 2z. And just one more integral and then we're done. Right? Now 1 half plus 1 half is 1. If you integrate 1, what do you get? Z. And if you integrate 2z, you get z squared. And then when you plug in 1 and 0, what do you get? 1 plus 1 is 2. So if we were using that unit of kilograms per cubic meters, the end, at the end of the day, we will say that whatever that was, that cube would be uh, having the mass of 2 kilograms. That's what we will get. <coughs> that's when, that's, that's a, uh, a case where, where you will definitely need to use a triple integral to find the answer to. Now, uh, there are other cases when you have to use triple integrals. Uh, let me mention a few. Uh, one thing is, one case is when you're trying to find the volume. See, if you have some three-dimensional object, uh, enclosed by some surfaces, then you can calculate the enclosed volume by again doing volume as some of its parts. And because these volumes are, are very, very small things, uh, and you're trying to add everything inside this, this uh, three-dimensional object, this ant integral actually turns into a triple integral, and dv turns into uh, dx dy dz or uh, yeah, dy dz or this can be uh, the order can be changed I might have dz dy dx just so that uh, in some cases that's easier okay uh, now if you don't have anything to integrate under dx you should really think of this as integrating a one so you can think of this as v uh, is you're integrating everything uh, uh, you're integrating one by dx dy dz over the given given region V. So that's how you find the volume. Uh, still another example that I don't think we'll be able to go over today is uh, sometimes you can use triple integrals to find the center of mass for a given object. Okay, so that's another interesting case. And, uh, you get to use such integrals in engineering statics. You might, if you don't see it in this class, you, you'll see it in that class. Okay.